Pizza is one of the most popular dishes in the entire world, especially here in the northeast of the United States and great cities like New York and Philadelphia. Here's the thing, though. We're not actually sure exactly where the word pizza comes from. Let's do our best to unravel the story together. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. Now, first you may be thinking, Luke, are you an idiot? Pizza's from Italy, therefore pizza is an Italian word, isn't it? To that I say, dear and sagacious viewer, indeed pizza is an Italian word, but Italian is not a monolithic language. Obviously the core of Italian is Latin, but it has had lots of influences on it, including contemporary Greek, depending on the century, Germanic languages like Lombardic, even Arabic. Take the word quintale, you'd think that means 500 of something. Quintale actually comes from the Arabic word that comes from the Latin word quintenarium for 100. Quintale means 100 kilos. See? You didn't know that. That was interesting. There are many dialects or indeed languages of Italy. So which one does pizza come from? Pizza comes from Neapolitan language or dialect. Where does this word pizza come from? Well, let's say that pizza comes from the Byzantine Greek word pita. Except that the Byzantine Greek word pita seems to actually come from an Italian dialect or language. We have different words in Italy for this food that we universally tend to call pizza. For example, there's the word pinza in northern Italy, pizza, of course, in uh, Naples, in Napoli. And then there's also pita with two t's, and those are found in the far south of Italy. Now, that seems to suggest that the Greek word pita, with only the one tau, tav, actually comes from an Italian word, pita, because it has that geminated double T. Well, if that's the case, then, especially looking at these words, pinza, pizza, pita, it seems to suggest that a proto-romance word, a vulgar Latin word, is responsible for all of them, and it's just interpreted differently. Well, what word could that be? Well, this word, pinza, almost seems like a slight fortition of the word pinsum in Latin, pinsum, pinso, pinsare, means the pound, which is something that you have to do to the dough of something like pizza, right? So pinso, pinsare, pinsitum, or just pinsum, that could give us this word. It could also be the past participle of the verb pingo pingere, pictus, and that means to paint. An alternate proto-romance version of this pictus is pinctus, seen in the Italian word dipinto as opposed to, say, de pictus, which would be the standard Latin participle. Or, there's the verb pinzare. Pinzare means to staple, and it may actually have a Germanic origin. In fact, there's another northern Italian word, bizzo, which is related to the English word bit, like a bite or a morsel of something, but that etymology is probably not involved. So this pinza could, in fact, be related to a ultimately a French word in modern metropolitan French, it's pincé, to pinch. For example, there's the Italian word pizzicare, which is a version of pizzare. So pizzicare, pizzare, means to pinch. And well, where does, it's clearly related to the English word pinch, well, where does that come from? Well, that seems to actually come from a Germanic word. So maybe this is a contamination of a northern Lombardic Germanic word, this, this pinz root, with a word that actually did come from Latin. Given the word pita that we find in the south and pinza elsewhere, this happens actually where we have something like a pins becoming pints with the letter Z. This happens in different dialects in Italy, so that wouldn't be out of the question. Another possibility is that the Greek word pita actually comes from an Aramaic word, pita, which would mean a small morsel of bread, ultimately from the Hebrew word ba. And speaking of Hebrew, you can learn Biblical Hebrew, Old English, Latin, and Ancient Greek at the Ancient Language Institute. At ALI, you don't have to choose just your one metaphorical pizza or donut. You can have both with this incredible smorgasbord of ancient languages available for you to learn. But if you want to get in on this buffet of Biblical and Classical languages for the fall semester, you'll have to sign up by August 12. And if you do, what will a class be like at ALI? Well, let's say you take beginner Latin. Once you sign up, you'll be able to coordinate with ALI to find a class time that works best for you, the student. In the meantime, you'll have access to tons of audio and visual material, some recorded by yours truly, to prepare you for the first lesson. When you arrive, your instructor, a very friendly and erudite individual, will welcome you to the course and you'll get right to work. Salve, mihi nomen Lucius est. 
Quid est nomen tibi? Roma in Italia est. Philadelphia in America est. Ego Philadelphiae habito. Et tu ubi tu habitas. From the very first lesson, you'll be hearing Latin and speaking it as well. Don't worry, you can ask as many questions as you like, and there will be some explicit grammar taught too. But soon, you'll have the joy of taking classes entirely in Latin, or in Ancient Greek, Biblical Hebrew, or Old English. Learn to be a fluent reader of ancient languages. For me, it's been one of the most rewarding journeys of my life, and I hope it will be for you as well. For more information, go to ancientlanguage.com to sign up before August 12th. Now, let's use some knowledge of ancient languages to solve the mystery of the etymology of pizza. So could it be that the origin of the Greek word pita is actually Aramaic, pita, with a very similar meaning, ultimately from Hebrew? Could this actually be a Semitic word that's been brought into Greek? And then the Greek, through the Byzantine Empire, brought it to Italy? It's really hard to tell. Given the dialectical variety that we see in Italy, I think it's ultimately more likely that there is some kind of late Latin proto-romance origin here. The difference between pinza, pizza, pita suggests that to me. Pizza, of course, is found in varieties all over Italy. The kind of pizza that we're best familiar with in the United States mostly has its origins with Neapolitan-style pizza. We have a few different styles, including the kind that we call Sicilian and you know, Chicago-style. Those types of pizza are primarily ones that may have had some origin in Italy at one point, but are mostly things that we've cultivated here in North America. So there are different types of pizza or things that are similar to pizza in the various regions in Italy. And pizza is such a useful word in Italian that it's even used as a way to replace an interjectionary swear word. For example, if a situation or something is just going lousy, you can say, get pizza. It's replaced another word that I don't want to say right now in this video, but ah, get pizza, what the heck, ah, this stinks. That's another way that you can use the word pizza. Whatever the etymological origin ultimately of this wonderful food, Pizza is a universal symbol of happiness the world over, and I'm going to enjoy this slice very much. Thanks again to the Ancient Language Institute, and thanks to each and every one of my Patreon supporters. Walete. So could it, so could it, so could it be,